Welcome to the Moody's Tire and Auto Football Extra. Visit us at Moody's Tire for all your tire and automotive needs. Stop by and see us at 1600 Columbia Avenue. Well, hello once again, everybody. Joe Williams, Maurice Patton for Moody's Tire and Auto. It is our special Blue Cross Bowl edition. As we talk about Class 6A, where Ravenwood 14 and 0 undefeated. Maurice, they're making their third trip to the Blue Cross Bowl in their what 12, 13 year history. Uh, they will be facing. Maryville, who is making its 11th consecutive trip to the Blue Cross Bowl. Is that not amazing? There are other terms I would probably use. I'd, I'd like to see some paperwork, but that's another story. No, I mean, <laughs> it's just crazy. It's crazy to me, and, and I've had this discussion with a few folks across the state, how you have two, two programs, the caliber of Maryville and Alcoa, both in Blount County, yeah. that are both as exceptional as they are. And... I don't know how they do it, but um, somebody from Williamson County might want to try to check because um, what they've done up there is nothing short of impressive. In the last 10 years, they have played in 10 Blue Cross Bowls. They have won seven out of the 10 in a combination of Class 4A and Class 6A, and that's what Will Hester and his Raptors walk into. And I got to tell you, I talked to Hester earlier. I don't think he's really concerned about what's happened in the past. I don't think Ravenwood is thinking about taking a step back, and I think when they take the field Saturday night, they're not taking a step back from them. They're 14-0 as well, and they just beat the team Whitehaven that beat Maryville two years ago. Now, obviously, it's not the same team. It's not True. the same personnel. It's the same program, and so I think they're definitely going in there with a why not us type of feeling. Last Friday night in Memphis, Ravenwood, who has depended on defense all year long, and to an extent that's kind of been overshadowed, Hester's been pumping at me every week all year about my defense, my defense, and he's right. Last week, uh, Lutkin had three interceptions on his own. Uh, Nick Barton had another one, pulled it down in the end zone, stopped a drive. Uh, the defensive line was extremely stout. It was a 24-14 ball game that was really 24-7. And, and the thing is, I think somebody at Ravenwood got a hold of something that somebody in Memphis says. Somebody says something about somebody's mama, you know? Yeah. No, but um, I think um, the Whitehaven folks kind of questioned Ravenwood's heart a little bit, and they took it too hard. And, um, made sure to make it a point with their defense down there Friday night. Now this game will be Saturday night. It is the capper of the three-day Blue Cross Bowl at Tucker Stadium on the campus of Tennessee Tech University up in Cookville. I uh, understand you uh, you have your tent ready and you're just going to sack out for the three days, but that's, that's what happens sometimes. But this will be the last game, literally the last game of the year scheduled for a 7 o'clock kickoff. And, and, you know, when you've got two 14-0 teams capping it off, I don't know that you could have a better matchup for the last game of the year than this. Um, I think Ravenwood really matches up well. I think they've got enough offensive weapons that they can make this a game for four quarters. And I think if they can take care of the football and weather what Maryville does, I think they've got a shot. A couple of things with offense, uh, you know, Cole Brown has developed into a very good quarterback. In a short time. In a very quick amount of time. Uh, you've got Van Jefferson, the finalist for Mr. Football on one side, Austin Percy on the other. You've got Seth Rowland in the backfield. Those are the names that you know. But on the defensive side of this football, I think Maryville, the Red Rebels, are going to run into some players the likes of which they probably have not seen this year. You know, and, and I think Ravenwood kind of likes being that quiet, no-name type defense. Spoke to some of those guys earlier this week. Um, Nick Barton, you mentioned at safety. Um, Jeb Stewart, one of the linebackers, Garrison Geronimus on the outside. I think they like, you know, you talk about being overshadowed maybe, but I kind of think they like running under the radar a little bit, that defensive side. Quietly, I think they've given up more than 14 points twice all year. I think they've had three shutouts. Two of those were against playoff teams. Yep. So, so defensively, they've been getting it done all year. And, um, I'm not sure if Maryville necessarily realizes how good they are on defense. I think that's something we'll get a chance to see come Saturday night in Cookville. Hope you'll come up and join us. If not, follow us on Twitter at WH Sports. We'll have live tweets going on, and the staff will be there, and we'll have complete coverage for you by the end of Saturday night, early Sunday morning. And, uh, partner, this is kind of it for us. It's been a great year. I'm glad you are able to come join us. Well, it's been a great year here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this it's been is an interesting year. year. How's yeah. that? I'll go with that. Of course, it's been so great to add Charles Pulliam to the staff here at the Williamson Herald. You don't know how blessed we are to have these two guys right here with us. And, and Doug Dyer, 
What a job he's done, as he always does. We do want to say thank you, as I, I guess this really is. At 6A, our last Moody's Tire and Auto Football Extra. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Joe Williams, and eh, you never know when you'll see us again.